So we are on this series, The Blueprint for Spiritual Growth. Blueprint for Spiritual Growth. Now when you think that you have become all that, just take a look at God. Amen? Uh, we're going to be growing forever with Jesus. We're going to be growing forever. So in the fall, we really went deep into the series, of the Freedom Series, right? We talked about freedom. And now we're really digging into this spiritual growth because you're not going to have spiritual growth unless you understand freedom. Unless you understand the freedom that Jesus Christ has given us through the shedding of His blood on the cross at Calvary and then making Himself available to us so we could receive Him as our Savior and free us from the bondages of sin, sickness, disease, anger, frustration. Unless you understand that freedom, you're never going to grow. And so many people are willing to be saved and born again, but they never grow into the spiritual giants that God has called us all to grow to. And so we set out uh, a couple of weeks ago, and the first thing we talked about was that very thing, the redemption, the redemptive work of Jesus, and understanding the redemptive work of Jesus, His sacrifice, His blood, and His redemption on the cross at Calvary. You see, we hear those things so much that they kind of just become commonplace to us, right? We, we hear those things, but, and, and we don't really take the time to, to, to establish ourselves and root ourselves into the truth and the depth of Jesus' work on the cross at Calvary. It defeated everything that's against you. Amen? It rendered powerless, it rendered powerless the powers of darkness. Then we, then we talked about pray and practice. How we need to spend some time in prayer. In communication with the Lord. And then, then we need to practice what He tells us. And whenever, you know, when we read the Scriptures and we pray. And we meditate on the Scriptures and He tells us to do something. We need to be quick to do it. You know, all, <laughs> all too often we pray, we pray and we seek the Lord, and we pray and we seek the Lord, pray and seek the Lord, and then He'll tell us something and we'll go, ah, <laughs> that's, not, that's not what I wanted to hear, right? I, and we, we pray and pray and, and, and we spend a lot of time praying and then He'll, he'll nudge us and we'll go, nah, <laughs> i got to do it a different way. <laughs> um. So we need to practice. We need to practice praying to Him. We need to practice listening to Him. And we need to, we need to practice doing what He tells us to do. Amen? And, and in that, that series, we gain an understanding of, of what it meant to be translated into the kingdom of Jesus' love. And uh, we are kingdom people. Amen? Whether you're saved or not saved, you're kingdom people. You're just, you, you're just in one of two kingdoms. You're either in the kingdom of love and the kingdom of light, or you're operating in the kingdom of darkness. And the darkness tries to overtake the light, but the darkness can never overtake the light. Amen? We can turn every light off in here. We can turn every light off, darken all the doors where no light's coming into this place, and in anywhere in this building, you could strike a little match, and, and it would overwhelm the darkness. Amen? Darkness doesn't have any power. Wow. God gives me stuff that I don't even write down. So we are called to pray. In the kingdom of God, we are called to pray. We are called to pray in the kingdom of God. Prayer gives God the legal permission to get involved in and influence our lives and our affairs on earth. Prayer is going to God and saying, God, there's a situation in my life. I'm going to pray and I'm giving you legal permission to come into my life and begin to help me with that affair in my life, that problem in my life, that issue in my life. Sometimes it's not about an issue or a problem. Sometimes uh, yesterday I was in here and got a report that many of us have been praying for a friend of mine who has been on a ventilator for a long time in the hospital, and he was able to be removed from the ventilator yesterday, and all signs say he is looking good. Amen. 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 And, and, and there was a lot of praise in this house of the Lord yesterday. 
Why? Because we've been praying, been believing. We have to practice. We have to practice. We have to develop a life full of thoughts, actions, words, behaviors, and beliefs that are so uh, instructed in the Scriptures. We have to practice. How many of you know that being a Christian doesn't come natural unless you practice it? Walking in faith just doesn't come natural because it's supernatural. Now, I know that there's people on the TV that everybody wants to see the supernatural. If you're born again, that's supernatural. Amen? Amen? Today we're going to talk about desire. I hadn't really ever given this much thought, thought as one of the pillars of spiritual growth. But it really has everything to do with spiritual growth. The blessing and the curse are connected to your desire. Okay? Now I'm going to explain that. But the blessing and the curse are both connected to your desire. Here's what desire is. It's simply wanting to have something. It's, that's it. That's all a desire is. It's wanting to have something. Desires originate either in the flesh. Those desires are connected to the curse. Or they originate in the spirit. And if it's originated in the right spirit, those are connected to the blessing. Desires are affected by many things. Fear affects desires. You operate in fear, your desires are going to be originated out of fear. Right? You operate in anger, your desires, most likely for whoever made you angry, is going to be not under the blessing, but under the curse, right? If you operate out of anger toward people, all you're ever going to do is have desires that those people pay the price that Jesus has already paid. Amen. See how desires work? Okay, we're going we're gonna, to we're gonna deal here today. It's important that we understand where our desires originate. And if they're part of the flesh or if they're out of the spirit. When I talk about the spirit, I'm talking about the spirit of righteousness. Now today, we're going to have lunch, right? And we know we're going to eat. And pretty soon, you're going to start smelling all that good food come through here. And what's going to happen? As that food gets prepared, it's going to come into the sanctuary and your senses are going to produce a desire in you. Right? Heck, you may not even be waiting on to smell the food. You may already want to go back there and eat. That's a desire. It's normal to have desires. Well, what are you going to do? Your desire is to eat, to fulfill the desire of your physical body. So you're going to get up at some point when the preacher lets you, you're going to get up and you're going to make your way to the kitchen and you're going to see all the selection there. And you're going to choose that which you, you're going to choose that which you most like to fulfill that desire. Now there's a lesson in that. Because in order to be satisfied in the kingdom of God, it's not always about what we like. It's not always about what we want to choose. But our desires can be satisfied. So what comes first? The desire. You're going you're gonna to smell the food. And you're going to have a desire to eat. What comes next? The action. The action comes. You go to the place where the desire can be met. You go to the place where the desires can be met. Wrong desires, you end up in the wrong place. 
correct or righteous desires, you end up in a good place. Then you make the selection. Lots of choices back there. Then you make the selection, and then you're going to eat, and satisfaction is going to be the result. Now that's, that's just the model of desires, understanding desires. Because we're talking about spiritual growth. We're talking about spiritual growth and desires being one of those things that we have to understand in order to grow spiritually. So what is a desire? Desire is one of the elements of Christian life that must be developed. We must develop. We must develop desires in order to grow spiritually. We must develop desires in order to grow spiritually. Do you know that people will ultimately find a way to get what they desire? Now, I'm not picking on anybody in here, but if you're a smoker, you will find a cigarette. Right? If, if you are. If you're a drinker, you will find the bottle. I don't know. If you're a gambler, you'll find a place to do it. If you're a giver, you'll find a place to give. If you're a servant, you will find a place to serve. If you're a prayer person, you will find a place to pray. If you're a preacher, you will find a place to preach. Everybody has desires and most people will make sure that their desires are fulfilled. The problem with a lot of desires is they're not what God desires for us. It is things that we have put on us saying that we think that God wants us to have that and it's never something that God has called us to. First thing we're going to talk about, we'll spend a little time here because we're going to, I'm going to show you the difference between lust and desire. Lust is the desire of the evil. When I mentioned anger, somebody makes you anger, somebody makes you angry, somebody hurts you, and you desire to see them suffer, that's lust. The church has taken lust and categorized it into the realm of sex. Lust is an evil desire. That's all it is. It's not confined to the realm of sexual impropriety. It's often manifested there, but lust is just the desire of the evil. Actually, lust means evil desire. The flesh is the realm of the mind, the realm of the physical, and the realm of the soul, and primarily the soul which refuses to be saved. Now you got to remember, you've got to separate the soul from the spirit. When we give our hearts, our spirit, our inner man, when we give our hearts to Jesus Christ, it is our spirit that is renewed, not the soulless realm. I know that you hear to save souls, but it's not the soul that's get born again. The soul is the, is the realm of the mind. The soul is the realm of the attitudes. The soul is the realm of emotions and thoughts, that's not what gets born again. It's your inner person, your inner man. The spirit gets born again. Soul has to be trained. So let's go to Galatians 5.19. Galatians 5.19. And that was just a good reminder, a good summary there. Galatians 5.19. We're going to read 5.19, 20, and 21. Now the works... Now remember, part two was pray and practice. Now the works... In other words, the practices of the flesh are evident. Which are? And we're going to read them. This is in Galatians. Now these are the practices of the flesh. Adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lasciviousness. And remember, lasciviousness is simply you're giving sin a license in your life. That's what lasciviousness is idolatry, sorcery, hatred. Now remember, these are the desires of the flesh, the works of the flesh, contentions, contentions, jealousies, outburst of wrath. That's a temper tantrum. Okay, that's all that is. That's a temper tantrum. Selfish ambitions, 
dissensions, heresies. Now, heresy in Scripture has a certain connotation. It's anti-Christ. But basically, that's where hearsay comes from. Gossip. Heresy, hearsay, gossip. You heard something about somebody and you go say it to somebody else. Mm, that's a work of the flesh. You don't know whether that's true or not. But boy, you'll speak it. <laughs> Envy, 521. Envy, murders, drunkenness, revelries, and the like, of which I tell you beforehand, just as I also told you in time past, that those who practice... Those who practice, remember we talked about pray and practice in our last series. Those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. That's the flesh. Because you're given flesh rule and reign in your life. And your flesh is teaching you to practice these things. Those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. So what should we practice? Well, righteousness should be the desire of every believer. Righteous practice. Should be the desire of every believer. Let's go to Galatians 5.16. See we're, we're backing up. Galatians 5.16. I say then. Walk in the spirit. Walk. That's action right. Remember I told you that when you smell all that food. And your, your desire comes up to eat. And you're going to be hungry. You're going to have to take action to go fulfill that desire. So walk in the spirit is action that will fulfill the desire. I say then walk in the spirit. And you shall not fulfill the lust or the evil desires of the flesh. He said, walk in the Spirit. What is the Spirit? The, walk in the presence. Walk in the Holy Spirit. Walk in the teachings. Walk in the counsel. Walk in the pra practice walking. Doing the things that Jesus told us to do. Man, you, you want to you wanna see Him pay. That's you playing God. That's your desire to play in God. You want to see them do what you know is best for them. That's originated out of fear. Re originated out of control. If you're not careful, all of a sudden, all that manipulation and stuff will start. Okay? So let your desires be made known to God. And let Him decide. When the truth, goodness, power, amazing grace, wonderment, love, promises of Jesus Christ are taught and received by faith, your desire for these things shall only grow greater. Amen? I dare say that most people would deal with what's in Galatians 5, 19 through 21 most of the time condemning people for that. But what Jesus came to do is show us how to walk out of that. We need to spend more time with the action than with the circumstance. Amen? Amen? Because in Galatians 5.16 it says, it says walk in the Spirit. Walk in the Spirit and you'll not fulfill those evil desires. Once the desire for righteousness begins to grow within your spirit, it begins to flow out of you like a river. Once, once you get that desire, you know, we'll go home today and we'll tell everybody how good that particular dish was. It'll flow out of us. We will share, we will testify. That's what testify is. I testify you of God's goodnesses whenever yesterday I got the report that, that my friend who has been struggling is on the men's and, and I'm testifying of his goodness and testifying. Well, that was the desire of my heart that he be healed. And they'd be totally restored. Now it takes an action. Now there's been a lot of prayer prayed for that man. A lot of prayer prayed for that man. As a matter of fact. Whew, I had to rebuke one of our friends. I had to rebuke one of our friends. Who was going around telling everybody how awful it was. Oh yeah. There are a lot of. There are a lot of people out there that are well-meaning people that have not been taught like you have. And he, 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 you know, we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> you can always tell which denomination they come out of as to how they parse their words. 
All right? So now the action. The action is go to the place where the desire can be satisfied. Now remember, I just gave you in 519, Galatians 519 through 21, I just gave you a bunch of desires that God wants you to have power over and not fulfill. Okay? He wants us to go to the place where the desire can be satisfied. We see this in Jesus Himself. I want to look at this because I got to, I got, I got, I got, I got to teach, I got to teach it, I got to teach it just like God gave it. John six thirty eight. Jesus says, "For I have come down from heaven." What did He do? He went to the place, right? Why did He come down from heaven? Because He and God were in agreement that He would go fix this thing that man messed up. So His desire was to be pleasing to the Father. So he came down from heaven. Look, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. He came down from heaven to do what the Father sent him to do. That right, you want, you want a scripture to determine your life? You're here to do what it is that the Father wants you to do. And the only way you're ever going to figure that out is if you pray and get with God and then begin to practice those things that He tells you to do. Not the way I want it done, Father, but the way you show me that you... What's my part in it? Amen? 639. This is the will of the Father who sent me, that of all, that of all He has given me, I should lose nothing. Of all that He has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up at the last day. Jesus came because His Father sent Him. He wanted to be pleasing to the Father because the Father wanted us to have this correct relationship with Him and be brought back into the blessing. And He said, you know what? We're not going to lose a thing. So when you hear people tell you that Jesus Christ is a lost cause, Jesus Christ hadn't lost a thing. Amen. Amen? Not a night's sleep. Not a business. Not your health. Jesus Christ is not the one losing it, folks. <laughs> right? Alright, Jesus Christ is not the one losing it. Your marriage, your relationships, your children, Jesus Christ, not because He said right here that I should lose nothing. Not your grandchildren. Come on now. I'm, pre I'm preaching good to you. What's your desire though? Is your desire to let, is your desire to trust God? Now He knows what your desire is. In every aspect of your life, He knows what your desire is. Problem is, are we are is is our action correct? Religion has taught us something very incorrectly. See, Jesus said, "Not to do my own will." Religion has interpreted that, if it is His will. Mm -hmm. Come on now. Religion has interpret, interpreted that, if it is His will. What is His will? That He should lose nothing. That's the will of the Father for the Son, Jesus, that He should lose nothing. And whenever we pray and practice, and whenever we have the desire, my desire is, all right, Jesus, you, Jesus not going to lose anything. Well, Jesus, show me how to hang on to it. Amen. Show me how to grasp it and hang on to it. Show me how to grasp faith. Show me how to grasp love. Show me how to grasp righteousness. Show me how to grasp all those things and then not lose it. Show me how to grasp healing and then not lose it. Show me how to grasp, show me how to grasp courage and not lose it. Well, you grasp it by reaching out to Jesus because Jesus is the whole package. And he's already he's inside of you if you believe him. Amen. Now, there are going to be things come against you. There are going to be things come against you. I was reading in there yesterday, and, and it just, 
in Thessalonians, and it just just hit me. You know, we all complaining about, you know, we're trying to explain why people don't go to church anymore. People don't go to church anymore. Well, there are some people going to church. But you know, I saw a scripture in there where Satan inhibited people from doing certain things. Well, if, if people don't know about the power of the Holy Spirit inside of them, they're going to give Satan the power and he's going to inhibit them from coming into the fullness of their relationship with Jesus. Well, sure. They're not going to be taught this stuff in school. They're not going to be taught this stuff at the courthouse. Right? So if people don't know about Jesus, that's why the commission of the church is to share the goodness of Jesus with people, not every problem that you have. Most people are not interested in your problems because, because they are not going to take on your problems because they got enough of their own they can't even deal with. Amen? So let the Holy Spirit teach, counsel, and guide you into all truth. Now, that, you, you say, well, Pastor, that's hard. I, I know it's hard, and I know there's people struggling, okay? All right? Well, come on and hook up with some of those of us that have learned how to work through those struggles. We know. There's not one of us in here that haven't looked and saw how in the world is that mountain going to be moved and then we wake up one day and guess what? We're on top of that mountain. <laughs> Amen? You know why there's so many mountains in your life? It's because Satan can't afford for you to see what's on the other side. Come on now. You know, Satan always seeks the high places. This is not in my notes either. You ever wonder why Satan is so, so in, in, embedded in, in, in the mountains of places like uh, Denver, Colorado and, 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 and Asheville, North Carolina? Because his desire is to be at the level of God. He always seeks the high places. So he's always going to show up on some mountain somewhere trying to convince you that you... And all Jesus said you got to do is speak to it because generally it's a... It's a mirage in front of you and, and you speak to Satan the name of God, the blood of Jesus in faith and he'll flee from that in a hurry because he knows what done to him. Amen? So you can speak to those mountains and they will be removed. Alright? So let the Holy Spirit teach, counsel, guide you into all truth. Begin to act on God's will for your life. Failure is not God's will for your life. Sickness is not God's will for your life. Anger and frustration and despair and disappointment is not God's will for your life. God gets blamed with so many things that He don't even have. He don't have it to give it to you. Now the selection. Today when we get back there, there's going to be many food choices. And you're going to have choice to, 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 to solve that that desire of your appetite. There's only one choice that can satisfy your spirit's hunger and thirst for righteousness. Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Money won't do it. Fame won't do it. Cars won't do it. Physical things won't do it. There's only one thing that will satisfy this, your spirit's hunger and thirst for righteousness. Jesus Christ and Jesus Christ alone. Choose Jesus. Choose Jesus. Now satisfaction. You see, everybody wants to be satisfied, right? Satisfaction. Let's look at Psalm 37.3. Psalm 37.3. Trust. Trust. That's an action, see? Trust, right? Folks, let me tell you something. In today's culture, trust is something that, that, that is going to have to be taught and practiced and learned in the church because we already know we cannot trust institutions. We cannot trust people. We cannot trust news. We, can, we cannot trust anything anymore because it's all fake. Amen? The world has become nothing more than one of these little fake, jewelry dealers on the street selling you a $20 Rolex. That's the world. That's the world system. That's all the promises out of the world. It's nothing more than a 
$20 Rolex. It's fake. It might look shiny, and it might give you a little bling, but it is worth nothing. That's the world. Trust is an action word. Trust in the Lord. Trust in the Lord and do good. Trust in the Lord and do good. Somebody asked me the other day, said, how are you going to make it through this economy? I said, I'm not participating in it. They said, what? I'm not participating in it. The world doesn't determine that for me. Now, I learned that a long time ago. Now, now see, now here comes the fear. Here comes the fear again. <laughs> oh, gosh, here the preacher going to start talking about money again. No, I didn't say a word about money. See, see, that's all that stuff. I didn't say a word about money. I'm not participating in the lack of the world. But there ain't no lack in heaven. Amen. Trust in the Lord and do good. And do good. There, there's the practice. Action is trust. Practice, do good. Dwell in the land. And feed, there's action again, feed on His faithfulness. Feed. In other words, when you make that selection, feed on Him. His Word. What are you, who are you listening to? Pastor Don and I were talking. Come on, see? Pastor Don and I were talking this morning. Nah, I better not go there yet. But we'll, but we'll get there. We, we spend a lot of time talking and praying. But yeah, I will. Okay, Lord. So you, I'm going to speak to young folks for just a second. Now all of you have Facebook? I, I, I started years ago, I call it fake book. What it's trained you. Now there's some good things about it, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm not against Facebook. You, you guys, that's your all's deal, okay? Uh, mine was, let me take you back, mine was the, most of you don't even know what mine, mine was the cassette tape or the 8-track player. Y'all don't even know what that is. Y'all's is Facebook, okay? Yeah, when I was your all's age, everybody had to have a big speaker in the back of their car with an 8-track player, and then the cassettes were like the great technology. Now we just got it on our phone. Facebook teaches you that if you disagree with somebody, you just unfriend them. It's okay to disagree. It's okay to disagree, folks. It's okay for us to disagree on things. That don't mean we just walk away because we disagree. Let me tell you who mastered that, and that is a history of church people. I just disagree, so I'll just go somewhere else because there's another one right down the corner, and then they ended up down there. Don't let that world system train you in how we should relate to each other as Christian brothers and sisters. Amen. Amen? That's for the youth. The rest of you, I don't know about your fake book uh, accounts. <laughs> Trust in the Lord and do good. It's okay to disagree with each other, but we're still required action to love one another. Yeah. Dwell in the land and feed on His faithfulness. Don't feed on the negativity. Feed on His faithfulness. That's action and selection. 37.4 Delight yourself. Delight yourself. That means our Lord is a delightful Lord. And you said that in a lot of churches that run you out. Because most of them go and that you would swear to goodness that they were probably passing out lemons in the parking lot. Delight yourself. Lord, our Lord is a delightful Lord. Delight yourself also in the Lord. And now look here at 37.4. And He shall give you the desires of your heart. He shall give you the desires of your heart. Amen? God will not give you what you will not receive. Now listen. <laughs> Ooh, he spoke that to me. God will not give you what you will not receive. Now whatever He has and you're willing to receive it, He'll give it to you. But He won't give it to you unless you're willing to receive it. God cannot give you what He does not have. 
Come on now. God cannot give you what He does not have. Now, our God is a holy God. you agree with that? Our God is a righteous God. you agree with that? Our God is a healthy God. you agree with that? Our God is a rich God. you agree with that? He didn't give you your sickness, your disease, and your poverty. He don't have it to give it to you. He cannot give you what He does not have. And He will not give you what you will not receive. But you just turn that around. He'll give you everything you'll receive from Him. And whatever you desire that He has, He'll give it to you. 37.5 Commit action. Commit your way to the Lord. Not to the way of the flesh that we walked, that we talked about. Trust, again, there's that word again. Trust also in Him. And He shall bring it to pass. He told us twice. He said He will give us the desires of our heart and He'll bring it to pass. He told us He's he trying to get our attention because He told us the same thing twice. 37.6 And now He tells us a third time. He shall bring forth your righteousness as the light and your justice as the noonday. Let Him do it. You just let your desire be that God bring the justice, not you. Whew. Whatever your desire is, you get your action and you get your prayer and you get your patience and you get your belief that God will bring it and rest in it. There's a lot of injustice. We could go around and we could, we could start writing injustices that's been done against us and it'd fill up every wall in here. But it is not our responsibility. God did not call us to right the injustices. He said trust in Him. Pray to Him. Practice His goodness. Believe Him. And He will do all of these things. Folks, the world's not going to solve it. <laughs> the world is not going to solve it. Amen? Let me tell you why there's lack in the world. Because ungodly people got control of it. Come on now. The reason there's lack in the world is because ungodly people got control of the stuff. Let's give the control back to God. Let's give the control back to God because there ain't no lack in God. Now there's discipline and there's patience, but there ain't no lack. The physical food that we select today will satisfy just for a while. The physical food that we select today will satisfy just for a while. And then some of us have heftier appetites than others. And we'll be ready to eat again later today. Right? Yeah. See? Yeah, yeah. Why? It's okay to desire. Yeah. Jesus satisfies forever. Amen? Now before we pray, I got a couple of directions from my beautiful wife. Is that we're going to pray over the food and we're going to bless it. And then we're going to go partake and you're going to select and that desire that you have is going to be fulfilled. And then when we leave, because we're on a fellowship together and we don't want somebody to have to stand out here and let people out that don't have keys, just exit through the back door. Because we want to, this is a fellowship meal and we don't want somebody to have to be out here with a key letting people in and out. So everybody just go out the back, that way the door will self-lock. That's the only assignment we have. Everything else is taken care of. Thank you for those that brought food today. Thank you for bringing yourself today. Folks, I'm excited I am excited about what God is doing here in your lives. I'm excited about some of the reports that we're getting. I'm, I'm excited. I know right now there's a lot of people that are pushing through stuff. And, and because when you see that beginning to happen, you, you know that, that we're right on the cusp. You know, Jesus had his disciples in a boat. And they were, Jesus said, we're going to the other side. Now, there was some great ministry and some great deliverance and great things that happened when they got over there. But there was a great storm that came against them trying to keep them from getting there. Our church has been pushed against a long time. But Jesus has been here and he's calmed the storm. And we're getting ready to arrive at that destination 
where this place is going to be so alive, it's going to be, it, it's going to be, it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. It's going to be challenging, but it's going to be fun. So as we go through this holiday season, I know things get really nuts and crazy and pressures. Trust the Lord. Trust the Lord. These are pretty, but that's not what it's about. It's about the birth of our Savior Jesus who will put desires in our spirit. And then when we get that desire and we begin to confess that desire to Him, He will lead us to the right action, to the right place, to where that desire can be satisfied. Whatever it is. Whatever is your desire. He wants you to be in a wonderful, happy, harmonious relationship. He wants you to be blessed. He wants you to be healthy. He wants you. He wants you to have that desire so much that He sent His Son Jesus to die for it. He wants you to be filled. He wants you to, 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 be, to be strong and vibrant. And he, he wants you to live a life that He died so that we could have. Let that be your desire. To be pleasing to Him as His Son was and the way you are pleasing to Him is just believing. Amen? Amen? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord, in the name of Jesus, thank You for this precious time today, Father. Lord, as we're coming up on the end of a calendar year, Father, we are just beginning, Father, in the realm of the Spirit for what You have for us. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank You. We thank You for this blessing of this food. We thank You for the hands that have prepared it. We thank You for this, this banquet that has been put before us this day, Father. Father, we thank You that we have the opportunity to fellowship today. And Father, we thank You that You are teaching us to walk in Your Spirit. And we are to crucify the flesh, Father. And that is something that we have to do minute by minute, day by day. But we are willing to do it, Father. For we have the desire to serve you. We have the desire to receive from you. And we have the desire, Father, to walk in the fullness of life which you have provided and given us through your Son, Jesus. We thank you, Father. And as we go forth, Father, praising and worshiping and loving you, Father, let it be known that we have been saved by the blood of Jesus Christ. For it's in the name of Jesus that we pray. Amen.